Hello everyone, welcome to my channel CryptoWare. And in today's video, we'll be continuing with the dynamic analysis process. So in our previous video, we did learn about how to perform the basics of dynamic analysis. We ran a few uh, tools. Also, we ran a malware into this virtual machine. So here we saw that in the process monitor, we had filtered the process that is the malware which we had executed and today we are going to filter out some more operations to understand what it actually does so from the registry key we had also ran few uh, other tools as well like regshot and uh, fake net so we'll be analyzing them also in our upcoming videos so from here, we can see that it has made few connections with the TCP, maybe some networking that it has tried to do. Also, we can see that it has added few keys. It has deleted few keys. So maybe it was trying to perform or it was trying to create persistence. So a, a ransomware, whenever it gets executed into your system, its main intention is to how to create its persistence. A lot of times what happens that the malware does not get executed or does not perform all the operations that it, that it is intending to at that particular time, but maybe will perform after a while, or maybe it has already started executing and it will be doing the rest of the operations one by one, and it may take some time, and it may try to perform some other actions as well. So it needs to have a persistence. For a proper targeted uh, attack, persistence is the main thing that it tries to do. So it will remain into your system and you won't even be aware of the fact that there is an, uh, a malicious process that is running into your system. So here, these are something, these are, there are some operations that we'll be checking through process monitors to analyze the process further. So the first thing would be, we'll go to the uh, process monitor tab and here we'll be filtering out some options. So you click on the filter option. As we can see that we have already selected uh, the process. We have already filtered out the process name. So we will only be seeing all information related to this process. So under this, we'll be checking few operations that it is trying to do. Some operations that is that can be considered as a malicious operation. So we'll click on filter, we'll select operation. So one thing that we saw that it was trying to uh, create some keys. So we can check for reg, reg set keys or reg set value maybe. Let's first check. Yes. So you can see that you can get few ideas from here. Reg set value is one that we can check. Apart from that, um, we can check if there is any reg delete key or reg delete value. So we'll click on reg delete. We'll just check. Yeah, we have reg delete key. Okay, sorry, I just made a mistake. So initially we did reg set, sorry, reg set value. Yes, so we'll just add it over here and apply. The next thing would be reg delete key. We'll just check from here. Quite normal that you might not be remembering all the operations name and while performing more and more analysis you'll end up remembering them all so that is not an issue you can always you know refer to the uh, refer to google you can refer to resources documents to this video if you want to know uh, if you want to remember while performing this analysis on your own the next thing would be reg delete value i'll again add it apply also, few things that we observed was writing few files. See, from here we can see that it has changed some value. It has did it has done some modification over here. There's too much random text over here. 
So it is quite difficult to understand everything from here. So why are we doing all these things? Because we want to get a visual representation and we'll be performing that visual, we'll be checking or seeing that visual representation in our upcoming videos too. So the next thing would be write. We can check if there is anything as write file. Yes, here we can see that write file is here because if it is a malicious program and is it trying to write something, yeah, we can see that it is writing some files. It is, it has written actually something. Some other thing would be process create because a malware would obviously when it gets executed will be creating other processes too. So we'll be checking if there is anything as process create and yes, we can see process create. We'll add that too. Another thing that we can check is uh, networking. We saw that it was trying to connect to a network. So it was TCP, we'll be checking, uh, we'll not be taking any, um, uh, one of it will just be taking the entire TCP so that everything gets added over here. We can check UDP also. Another interesting operation that we can put is set disposition um, value, I guess, I information file, sorry. Set disposition information file. So it helps you with uh, understanding the files that got deleted. We'll be getting into each and each of these operations into detail as well in our upcoming video. So don't worry. So we added that and apply. So here we can see that all the information that we were trying to check is over here. So we'll be pro performing some other process, uh, some other configurations too before saving it. And we'll be checking how to do that. Before, before doing this, let's get to the fake net. We will be checking these information in Wireshark. And now how are we going to do this? You can see that in the folder where your fake net is present, I guess it should be in the desktop. Yeah, so here the logs are getting created and it gets created in PCAP uh, as a PCAP extension. So what you can do is install Wireshark. I think Flare VM gives Wireshark. Even if it does not, you can install it on your own. So you will be able to view these logs using Wireshark. So what we'll be doing is we have this fake net and I think this is the one that we were trying to capture or we can check it out. Just we'll simply close this and we can check this packet. See, it's 861 KB. So this is the one. And since this is a PCAP file, we can directly open it using Wireshark. And here we can see what kind of connections it was trying to make. So from here, we can analyze the network. Uh, what kind of, we can do the analysis, network analysis of this particular process, the malicious process that it was trying to do. So the next thing would be before getting ahead, we have process monitor, sorry. Yeah, so in this process monitor, we'll be further analyzing all uh, this process. And uh, as I mentioned before, that uh, we will be visualizing, we will be uh, not visualizing, we'll be having a graphical representation of the process and all the operations that it was trying to follow. So for that, we have to perform few configurations. So once you have filtered out all the required process and the operations, we'll go to the options. We'll have to make sure that none of them is checked. Yeah, so none of them is checked. And the next thing is click on select columns. Thread ID has to be marked big because this will be very important for you while performing it, uh, performing the analysis further. 
we click on OK, we'll be saving this file in two different formats. One would be PML files, which is the extension for process monitors. So if we have missed out on anything, or if you want to make further changes, or we want to add some other operations, we can open that file again. We can uh, examine the processes again through process monitor. And another would be the in CSV file because the visual representation or the graphical representation of these process and the gra uh, and the operations would require the CSV file format. So we'll save it. Click on file, save. We'll click on all events, PML format. You can select your destination from here. Let's select the destination as desktop. We have mal1 over here. We can choose mal1. Logfile.pml. We'll click on OK. Done. And the second way to so, uh, save it is click on all events. We'll select comma separated value, CSV. And we can see that it is again in the same folder. So we'll click on OK. So it may take some time. So it didn't. Anyway, so we are done for this video and uh, we have all the details that we need for our further uh, analysis. So we'll be using Progdot in our next session, in the next video, and we'll be analyzing this further. So we are basically understanding what kind of uh, operations that we need to check, how we can check, and also the network analysis part. We saw how to use RegShot because uh, that helps you to understand what changes were made to the system. So that's it for today's video. We'll see you in the next video where we'll be uh, we'll be further we'll be going ahead further with the dynamic analysis part. And thank you so much. Please like, share and subscribe to my channel and see you in the next video.